Hey Travel Biz Owner, welcome to the Summer Selling Series on the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Podcast. Let's gear up for a summer of sales and learn from top industry experts how to demystify some of your favorite or most intriguing destinations or products. Download the free worksheet in the show description to start taking notes and let's dive in. Hello everyone, Rita here. I'm your host on the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Podcast. And if you weren't aware, we are doing a summer selling series. So for the past couple of weeks or the next couple of weeks, wherever this interview falls in line, we're having experts on different destinations come and really teach us about the different destinations and how we can sell more of those within our travel businesses. So today's episode, I love how we're kind of like going very international. We've gone like Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere. We're coming really close to home with this one. We're going to one of the states in the U.S., Hawaii. And so I have Christy Emo here. She runs a Facebook group. Um, she just told me she's been to Hawaii over 20 times. Uh, so she has lots of knowledge on Hawaii and selling this. So welcome, Christy, to the summer series. Hi, Rita. Thank you so much for asking me to be here with you. Yes, I am so excited. Now, I also have to like say, like just mention for those people who are like, I can't sell Hawaii because I've never been to it. Hawaii is like one of those destinations that I have never been to, but that I have sold a little a couple of trips here and there so you do not like if you're scared that you haven't been there but this is kind of like why we're doing this here today too if you're scared that you haven't been there we're gonna drop some knowledge today to help you be a little bit more comfortable so uh, give us the background because you're on the west coast so it's a little bit easier as opposed to like east coasters like myself to get to hawaii because i think it saves at least one plane trip growing up what was what was since you have been on 20 trips to Hawaii, what is it about Hawaii for you that is super magical and that you love sending people there? Uh, yeah, actually, I'm over, I think, 35 now trips. Wow. But since I was in my early 20s, so it okay. started before I was a travel advisor. OK. Um, and and uh, so my parents had actually taken a trip to Maui. They had so much fun that for Christmas after they came back, my our, our Christmas present even though we were all adults, uh -huh. um, but like, you know, early twenties down to, yeah. So anyway, we were, all three of us were adults, but my, my parents enjoyed their trip so much that my dad said, we're taking you all back to do it as a family nice. because he just thought it was so beautiful and uh, just loved it so much that he wanted to share that with all of us. And I, um, anyway, so, um, yeah, that was before I was a travel advisor. And so uh -huh. most of the trips back have been since I've been a travel advisor. And yes, living in California or, you know, the West Coast in general, it is easier as now I live in the center of California in Fresno. So we don't have nonstop flights here. So I generally would have to go through LA or San Francisco okay. um, in order to get there. But there are nonstop flights from multiple, you know, West Coast cities. So uh -huh. from most of California, it, it would be you know, between five and a half to six hours, you know, okay. maybe slightly larger for those people, maybe slightly longer for coming from Seattle or, you know, Phoenix. There's also, there's also nonstop flights uh, re regularly from Dallas okay, um, and some other kind of maybe Midwest areas that would just have a single connection East coast. Occasionally during busy seasons, there can be um, non-stop flights, especially into Honolulu, which is on the island of Oahu, mm -hmm. uh, which is the most visited island and yes. the most uh, number of visitors and the most flights coming in. Um, so, but yes, yeah, so seasonally, especially summertime and sometimes in the holidays, there might be a non-stop flight occasionally from, you know, Hawaiian, American, United, something like that from some of the bigger East coast cities, but often you're going to, they're going to have a stop somewhere. Right. Um, you know, when, and I always recommend to people to look to get them further West, you know, especially if it's a season during when there could be weather issues. Okay. You know, like we don't normally have snow here or icing or, you know, especially for winter vacations, Right. you know, when it's very popular to visit Hawaii when it's cold or, you know, things like that anyway. So, and people are, from the East Coast are generally booking 
longer vacation. So I have, I have, uh, you know, East Coast clients as well as agents who refer clients to me because okay. they don't know the destination. And I will often, you know, like you said, you don't have to, we can't know the world as an expert and we can't right. have traveled everywhere. And right. it shouldn't stop you from being able to successfully book a wonderful trip for your client. Right. You just have to, I mean, in my opinion, wherever you're going to sell, you should have a little bit of base knowledge about, or know that there are, what can I do quickly mm -hmm. to learn, right? I mean, so right. Hawaii specifically has a travel agent online training program at agents.gohawaii.com yep. that people can do at their own pace. They have two intro courses that you take online, pass the test, and then you can even have a, um, you know, Hawaii specialist designation that you can use. I don't think it makes you a specialist at all, but it, it they do at least give you something to indicate that you have passed the test and it gives you a little base knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then there are additional courses that you can take of each of the main islands where, you know, visitors can travel. And right. then you'll learn a little bit more in depth about the unique features of each of the islands because, it is important each of the islands are different. So it is important to know a little bit so that you can help match your clients to, right. you know, the islands that are going to give them the experience they're looking for. Right. Because um, giving like just a brief overview of kind of the islands, because I, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm probably wrong. I feel like there's seven <laughs> Hawaii Hawaiian islands, but you can only visit five of them. Well, so you can actually visit six Okay. Um, and so the, um, there are technically, I mean, well, the islands that would be easily named on a map, if you, you know, if you look, there would be eight because the, the joke is, so where Hawaiians go on vacation often is Las Vegas. So the joke is that Las Vegas is Hawaii's ninth island. Um, that's because funny. that's yeah so Hawaiian Airlines has packages into Las Vegas for Hawaiian residents because well there's no gambling um, in Hawaii at all no casinos no bingo or anything okay. and Las Vegas has really welcomed um, a lot of Hawaiian residents they have specific hotels and Hawaiian food and different things that make them feel even more welcome you know so uh, yeah so there are there are six islands basically that people can visit okay. um so oahu is where honolulu and waikiki beach are yes. right you wanted me to go through them a little bit right yes yes so, please. Okay. Yeah. so yeah so oahu is honolulu waikiki pearl harbor mm -hmm. okay so that's Diamond that's Head. where that's where that is waikiki is an area as a neighborhood of like at Honolulu mm -hmm. and it's mainly high rise hotels all yes. in, a, in a relatively compact strip, long, long stretches of beaches, um, shopping, restaurants, everything within walking distance. So people generally, if they're staying in Waikiki, don't need to have the expense of a rental car or the right. cost or yeah. Um, and, but there are other parts of the island where there are some hotels as well, but uh, 99% of the whole hotel accommodations are in Waikiki. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. Cause I also mm -hmm. think about if people don't want to be in the hustle and bustle. And I think also if you're a big Disney fan, Aulani is on Oahu, just a different section. It's away from Waikiki. Yeah. So it's in an area called Koolina, mm -hmm. uh, which is in about an hour away from Waikiki itself and a whole different world. Um, over there and then there's a four seasons right next door to it as well okay. so they kind of have these little cove beach areas okay. and it's kind of off to itself so yes the Alani Disney property is that's where that is located and people stay there generally would want to have a car because otherwise you're going to be stuck at the Disney property with its super expensive food you know so even if you can afford mm -hmm. The hotels, right, there are no all-inclusive resorts in Hawaii, which is another misconception. But um, the Alani is expensive enough itself. And when you're locked into any hotel, right, <laughs> the food's always more expensive than what you can find outside of the hotel, right. as well as being more authentic. And, and anyway, so, so yes, there's the Alani Hotel. There's Turtle Bay at the North Shore. Um, so, you know, those are kind of the, the uh, other areas uh, mm -hmm. on Oahu. 
And sometimes all I've had people do a split stay, especially families that maybe they want to experience the Disney property because they have small kids or preteens. Right. Uh, but they can't afford to stay there their whole vacation and maybe they don't even want to island hop. Um, and so they can split their time between a few days at Alani and the rest of the time in Waikiki or going to another island. Because okay. generally Waikiki, the hotels there are generally the lowest in price you're going to find across the islands. Okay. And, you know, it has that biggest airlift and everything. So there's the most number of flights coming in from everywhere. And you're going to find the least expensive flights coming into Honolulu as well versus okay. some of the other islands. So when 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 advisors who are new to Hawaii have um, clients who are also new to Hawaii, if they're looking at budget is a big factor, like it is for most people, but not everybody. Right. Uh, then, you know, if you're looking for how to get people to Hawaii less expensive, then, you know, look into flying them into or out of Honolulu. Mm -hmm. you know, so that, you know, you can get better flight options as well, as well as the cost. Mm -hmm. well, so outside of, outside of Oahu, the yes. second most popular island is Maui. Yes. Um, it is not that far away. So all of the islands are close together. Once you get to Hawaii, mm -hmm. it's not more than an hour between any of the, any of the pairing of islands. So it's Perfect. very easy for agents and clients to put together multi-island itineraries, especially for those clients coming from the Midwest or East Coast, where Hawaii might be a once in a lifetime trip, right? Right, Because for East Coast and Midwest, it's so much easier if they're looking for a sun in the fun, you know, fun in the sun beach vacation mm -hmm. to go to the Caribbean. And obviously there's many more all-inclusive rates that are, you know, better values for some people in their minds and in agents' minds maybe, but nothing compares to Hawaii in terms of the aloha spirit and the people and the, right. you know, anyway. So, um, but Maui has, uh, as opposed to Oahu, Maui has the second number highest of visitors, but it's been voted the number one Island in the world many, many times in different oh. travel rated magazines. And so it's really good for families, for couples, for any multi-gen families, um, really great beaches. So almost all of the resorts are set on on family friendly swimming beaches. So there's no issue with is my beach swimmable? Is the resort at the beach? All of that. So all of the hotels are set in two main resort areas: Kahana Poly Beach, which is mainly three and four star properties, and then Wailea, which is normally mostly five star. Okay. Um, that's more the luxury side. Um, of Maui and both resort areas have lots of restaurants and shops and things mm -hmm. but some big hotels but they're not full of all high rises all along the beach boom 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 like Waikiki right, right. so they're, they're, they it definitely has more of an island vibe and not the urban city feel that Waikiki has Okay. So that's something I always share with 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 clients looking at Oahu and Waikiki. I want to make sure that they know that in comparison to the other islands, Waikiki is the only one with the high rises all along the beach. Okay. And you can easily Google pictures and see Waikiki lit up during the day at night oh, yeah. with you know with Diamond Head in the background. That will always tell you that that's Waikiki. Yeah. And when you see those high rises, if people are alarmed that, that 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 is what the other islands look like in terms of the resort areas, it's not. No other island has that same uh, Waikiki vibe. So yeah. Uh, but Waikiki is also going to be the place if people are looking for nightlife or you know much going on at, in the evening after dinner or something because Hawaii is just not a huge spot for nightlife and you know a lot of things going on in the evening so right um, and people what, are looking for that what would you say um we've talked about a couple of like the big things to do on Oahu so what are some of the big things to do on Maui so there are several things that are really popular so if people are going in the winter time now so there are whale watching in the in the winter time the mm -hmm. whales are there Oh, I mean, so magnificent. If you've never seen this anyplace else, it's just fabulous. And you can see them from, so Maui is my favorite spot for okay. whale watching. If clients are going from, let's say, early December through early April. Okay. Um, 
is when that whales would normally be there. And you can technically see them by whale watching boats or uh, whale watching cruises that they have off of all of the various islands. Mm -hmm. But it's it's much easier to see them like off the beach or from your balcony. Um, you know, if you have an ocean view or an ocean front room um, off of either of the resort areas in Maui, you, they're kind of protected because two of the other islands where people can visit are right off of the uh, a connect kind of a channel right. uh, that is a uh, Lanai and Molokai. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of protected area with those three islands tends to be where a lot of the female whales give birth and things like that. So oh. it does seem to have a higher congregation of numbers of whales at times. So okay. when people, especially some people are a little leery about even being in a whale watching boat, but I say, you don't even have to, or they don't want to pay for it. Right. So I said, you know, here you can stand on the beach or you can look from your ocean view room or balcony and spot them. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how, so that's a really great spot during the winter um, Maui also has a famous dormant volcano called Haleakala, which means house of the sun. Okay. Um, and I give that meaning because what's famous there is the sunrise. Um, and so it, it is, it, you know, it, it kind of looks like the, the moon or something, you know, they're very different, uh, features when you look at dormant or extinct volcanoes or even the active volcanoes that are on Hawaii Island, mm -hmm. um, you know, but the sunrise, you have to get up in the middle of the night um, because it's a couple hours drive away from the resort areas. Right. Um, and you know, obviously you have to get there before sunrise. And that's where, you know, so um, and it's cold. So those are very popular. And they it's now that now requires a reservation in advance. Uh, so oh, people wow. agents want to be sure if they're sending clients. There are several sites. Um, and I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but there are several sites that now require advanced reservations because of uh, this, like many of them started during COVID when they were, you know, trying to work on crowd control and the numbers of people at, at things and issues okay. with parking and, you know, those kind of things. So Sunrise at Haleakala is very popular. I recommend people doing it with a tour company and not trying to drive themselves. Mm -hmm. Um there are, and then there's a famous day drive called the road to Hana. Yes. Um, it's a very twisty, turny road on the east side of Maui. That is the side of the island that is undeveloped, only one small hotel. Um, but, and it's very high, like sea cliffs. And so you get these amazing views of the ocean, mm -hmm. um, but it's a very windy road. There's more than 600 switchbacks or curves and one lane bridges. Oh, and wow. it's, it's, yeah. So it can be done either with a tour company where they're going to take people in a small, you know, say like a small van or a motor coach, small, uh -huh. and then somebody else does the driving or people can drive themselves because, on most of the islands outside of Oahu, um, it's recommended that people have a rental car for their stay so that they can get out and explore mm -hmm. on their own, as well as getting out for dining and shopping and other things to explore outside the resort. Um, mm -hmm. Because definitely in Hawaii, it's important for advisors who haven't been or don't know to explain why there aren't all inclusives and why there aren't, you know, why people should need a rental car, even though it does add to the expense, but you don't want to just get stuck. It's not like a, going to an all-inclusive in Mexico or Jamaica or something where it's generally people are going to stay at the resort their entire trip. Mm -hmm. and maybe they take one excursion off and maybe they just stay at the resort. In mm -hmm. Hawaii, you don't want to just encourage people to stay at the resort. You know, it's totally safe and easy to get around on your own. Obviously, there's no language barrier. There's right. no currency difference. There's no any of that. So uh, it makes it really easy. But driving the road to Hana um, can be done. It, it takes most of the day because it's a very slow speed limit. And usually okay. you're behind a lot of cars and you drive with aloha. So it means not <laughs> tailgating people and slow. I um, love that. Uh, yeah, I, I personally, there's a, there's a great, uh, and they do more than Hawaii, but there's a company that has um, an app. It's called Shaka, which is like the sign you make with your hands. But, okay. Um, and they do drives all over Hawaii that are affordable. And it's like having a tour guide in the car with you. Okay. You just play it on your phone and it takes you step by step. So um, I actually ended up buying the drive for some of my, some of my clients. 
It might be ten, twelve dollars, something like that. Uh, but it's one of the, it's a gift sometimes that I give people that I know are going to drive, and they're on various islands as well as other national parks, uh, other parts of the U.S. The Shaka Guide. Okay. Uh, so it's something you can look up. They do give agents um, uh, commission okay. if you register with them as an advisor, um, and just you know it's good for people to take a look. Um, but those are, besides the beaches, uh, um, the driving the road to Hana um, and the sun, sunrise at Haleakala are both very mm -hmm. popular. It's right. a great place for people to try snorkeling. Uh, there's snor yeah. there's multiple snorkeling trips. There's dinner cruises that can that are popular. Um, of course, on every island, there are luau's, which I highly recommend for agents mm -hmm. to include um, in any itinerary, especially for first-time visitors. Okay. Uh, you know, with dinner and a show. Okay. Um, and so my favorite of all in, uh, is the old Lahaina Luau, which is on Maui. Okay. Um, now, and you can have people listening that were concerned about the fire that affected Maui last year. In I August. meant to bring that up. Yeah. So I wanted to just touch on that really quick. So while the fire was destructive and took out a lot of restaurants, homes, where, you know, of course, there were almost 100 people who perished in that fire. Mm -hmm. um, it did not affect any of the hotels that we mainly book. So there were a couple okay. of small hotels in Lahaina that were destroyed. But Lahaina is is also, physic technically, it's the address for some of the hotels on Kahana Poly Beach. Okay. That, that's technically considered also the town of Lahaina. So... None of the resort areas were actually affected by the fire. So even Kahanapali Beach, there were no fire incidents there. Okay. Um, they, so the resorts are fully up and running over there. The activities that had been run out of Lahaina, like some of the snorkeling cruises or some of the dinner cruises and that type of thing, those were obviously affected, but some of those boats were able to be were survived the fires mm -hmm. and were able to move to either Kahana Poly Beach or Ma'alaya Harbor, which um, is more in the middle of the island where some other snorkel trips go from. So okay, there's no issue. Pe and I really want to strongly say that advisors should not be sending their clients away from Maui. There is no okay. fire damage. The people are not unwelcoming and do want visitors there desperately. Okay, The numbers are still off, even though... Um, the Hawaii Visitors Bureau and the Hawaii Tourism Authority and things have been trying to put um, out there, you know, PR ads and uh, YouTube videos and things like that showing that Maui wants visitors back desperately because okay. um, there are still tons of restaurants and activities. So the only, the only, the clients who have been to Maui before and were used to dining and shopping in Lahaina Right. It might be more of an impact to them, but there are still so many restaurants and shops outside of that area that make the island still a wonderful choice for so many families, couples, groups, what have okay. you. So I really just want to emphasize that Maui really needs us to be sending clients back where Maui is a good fit for the clients. Okay, so don't perfect. be scared. Don't think that things have to be rebuilt after the fires because that will take years. Right. I mean, they're right. focusing on people's homes first. So there are tons of restaurants. There's tons of activities. So it's there's no negative guest experience for clients returning to Maui or going for the first time. So right. there's really no cons against sending your clients there. Okay, um, so perfect. please, I appreciate agents understanding that and helping educate clients because there are consumer Facebook groups where there is still a little bit of negative um, resident posts, but it's mostly some people who are, um, you know, more concerned about housing issues and things like that, that, that are slowly getting worked on with the government and, okay. you know, all of that, because there were some of the Kahana Poly hotels have been hold, you know, have been, um, you know, sheltering fire survivors oh, nice. and, and, you know, and as well as people that were brought in from the government agencies to both help the fire survivors and to work and clearing, uh, you know, the emergency management companies and mm -hmm. things like that. So all of those people needed to have hotel rooms and, you know, things like that. And there are condos. And so there, some of there have been people and there are still some folks, um, you know, 
being sheltered in those places, um, it doesn't affect the guest experience at the hotels or condos. Okay. So, you know, they're so happy to have people back. I, I did go back after the fire. I was there on an ASTA classic vacations fam okay. in December by invitation because they weren't just seeing the numbers come back, even, you know, for the holidays, which is normally big season, right? Mm -hmm. for uh, and so, yeah, there's no impact. Everything was up and running. And so, so don't be shy to send your clients there or to help overcome some objections about fire related issues or unwelcome locals. Okay. Um, well, that's just not the case. Yeah, no, um, that's, that's really great to hear. Cause I know in the beginning, the Summer Selling Series is brought to you by the Cruise Content Library. Finding stock vertical videos for your social media marketing is not easy. <laughs> and I mean that good, juicy, quality content that paints a picture of the amazing cruise experiences and not just another drone footage of another ship. <laughs> but I'm changing all that and putting my best content of over 1,000 vertical videos available to you inside the cruise content library that's currently available for pre-sale. Finally sell with video storytelling on your social media channels. Visit the link in the show description to save your spot at the best ever pricing. Um, obviously there was a lot of like, let people kind of like recover from what just happened, pick up their lives and then come back. So give us a break for a little bit and then come back. Um, yeah, that's, that's true, Rita. But the thing is, is that if we give them too much of a break, we're causing employment and issues right. from all of the other, because most, you know, the tourism is such a huge issue in Maui right. that if the visitors aren't there, that think about all of those people who work in the hotels and the restaurants. Yep. So there, it's a, it creates a much bigger problem beyond those people who lost their lives and their jobs in the in the fire, because then all of those other survivors and the and the residents on the island who depend on tourism dollars for their income, mm -hmm. those people are at risk of unemployment, of businesses right. closing. And there's not that many other industries for people to work in. Right. So, you know, when you have these big hotels with hundreds of employees, they just can't keep going with, you know, such low hotel occupancy. And right. I'm not saying the hotel occupancy is that low now. I mean, they're still having a good summer, but the fall is really dropped off for a lot of Hawaii, you know, and the mm -hmm. prices are higher since the pandemic. So, you know, like almost everywhere, right? We right. know that the economy as a whole, everywhere in the world, not just the U.S. So Hawaii isn't really any different there. But I mean, that's just really wanted to, you know, focus on that with in terms of Maui, just because it's been such a continuing issue. Yeah, um, I know that. Did you want to touch on a little bit a couple of the other islands? Just yes, I was going to say. I know we still have Kauai and Big Island, Hawaii. Right. So the, so Kauai is my personal favorite, Kauai with a K. Okay. Um, and as I've been to all six. And so Kauai is my favorite because to, it is the most lush, green, tropical, what you think of a, a, a fantasy island. And I say that kind of jokingly because I know many people don't remember the show Fantasy Island. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm of an age where that was on TV when I was in high school and junior oh. high. Um, and it was actually shot, a lot of, some things were shot in Hawaii uh, for Fantasy Island, like the opening of the show that showed these high sea cliffs and things. That's the Nepali coastline mm, on yeah. Kauai. Yeah. Um, and Wailua Falls, which is the big waterfall that was in that, the opening of that show, um, and is, a, is a waterfall you can drive to. So Kauai is the easiest access to waterfalls for people just to be able to drive and see waterfalls. Okay. And to get a much less commercialized and developed island, and especially in comparison even to Maui. So a lot fewer visitors, a lot fewer hotels. The hotels are built on, you know, more acreage. Um, there's a building law that no, no building with a couple of exceptions that were grandfathered in can be taller than a coconut tree. So even larger hotels like the Grand Hyatt in Poipu is an, a series of multiple hotel room buildings instead of a high rise. So it's a that. totally different feel. 
Yeah. Um, so, and, and Hawaii at Kauai specifically has been the site of so many movies and TV shows like mm -hmm. Pirates of the Caribbean, um, the, it, anyway, the Descendants with George Clooney, a number of TV shows and uh, some of the Jurassic Park uh, have right. been built in Hawaii and Kauai. So they even have a fun movie set tour that people can do. Gilligan's yeah. Island opening was filmed there back in the day. That's awesome. um, several Elvis movies like Blue Hawaii were shot in Hawaii. So you can actually see some of that. Um, they With have amazing. The... Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just some amazing, like it's a great Island for hiking. They have the only river okay. that's navigable. So if people are kayakers or stand up paddle boarders and maybe they're a little bit, so it's a great Island for those active clients. Okay. Who want to do a lot outdoors. So it's a it's a roll up the streets at nine o'clock island though. So it is quiet at nighttime. Okay. Um, but for those people who want to see like maybe what Hawaii could have looked like 50 or 60 years ago before all of the commercial development. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it is still a modern island. So there is some of that. And there is only one, you know, one main highway that goes uh, around the island, which it's the only one you cannot drive all the way around. Uh, because of the Nepali coast. Um, okay. But the Nepali coast, it's a great island. My top number one recommendation for Kauai too is a helicopter tour. If okay. people are interested in doing a helicopter tour, and especially even if they're going to be visiting multiple islands, I love it on Kauai because there's so much that you cannot drive to. Okay. So Kauai has the, not only the waterfalls, but they also have Waimea Canyon which was, is nicknamed the Grand Canyon of the Pacific. So it's, yeah. a, it's a smaller version of the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. So you just have so much on one island that, you know, of, of course, all of the same beach things, you know, there's snorkel trips and sunset cruises and luau's and, you know, but it really good for driving around the car to explore between the North Major. Shore and the, and the South Shore of Poipu area, Kaloa Town. Okay. Um, so you really get much more of that small town vibe. There's no big city on Kauai. Okay. So it's really the, the city where the airport is, it's Lihui. Um, that's the government center for the island. There's a hospital, you know, it's a small oh, wow. town still, you know, so there's no big city. Okay. So there's no big city feel on Kauai. So it's uh -huh. much more has that tropical island feel. Okay. Um, and then the only island with an active volcano, when it is active, so if you have clients that are saying, I want to see a volcano, first ask them, do they mean something that could potentially be erupting or has erupted in the recent past? That would be what is known as the big island, but they're really wanting to get it back to the original, which is the island of Hawaii or Hawaii okay. Island. Okay. Uh, because sometimes the big islands, is some agents who haven't been and clients who haven't been, they sometimes think the big islands, that term is Oahu, meaning that's where all the people are and, you know, Waikiki oh, and Honolulu. That. But that, so that's a clarification that agents need to know as well. And that's okay. a good qualifying question, you know, during the consultation, you know, is what island and what do you specifically want to see and do? Right. So for, for agents to be able to sound like they know, even if they haven't been themselves, or even if it may be the first request that they've had, at least if you do a little bit of the pre-training, then you'll kind of know how to refer to the islands correctly. And right. which, what are the main highlights of each island? So, but the big island or Hawaii island, that's the only island with that has Kilauea, which is the main volcano that has been erupting off and on. Um, all of these years. So it's mm -hmm. currently, they just had a, a little, uh, uh, like some smoke and some of the precursors and a little bit something they thought it was going to be active a week or two ago. Okay. Um, and it has kind of since faded away. But Volcanoes National Park is the big tourist draw there. Yeah, they have a big visitor center, they have a, a lava tube that you can drive through. They have uh, park rangers and hikes and things where you can hike on the hardened lava and all of that. So the thing we just can never guarantee whether the volcano is actively erupting or not. So if right. that's the only reason people are selecting that island, we cannot tell them in advance if it's going to be erupting or not. So if right. they're going to stay there, there's a lot of other things they can do. It's mm -hmm. not the only reason to be on that island. Right. I mean, 
you know, and there's Kona and Hilo. There's two airports on either side of the island. Mm -hmm. 99% of the hotels are on the Kona side. Right. Um, I, I think of that manta is rays when I think of Kona. You think of what? The manta rays. Oh, yes. I mean, that is like my most favorite thing I've, I've done in Hawaii ever. So oh. it is one of the most unique things that you can do in Hawaii, which is only on Hawaii Island. Okay. In two spots in the Kona area, they do um, swimming or, I mean, I wouldn't really call it snorkeling, but um, swimming with the manta rays or just being able to see them, which is a nighttime activity uh -huh. uh, because they feed on the plankton in the water. And when the lights shine on them, like the dive lights or things, they uh, it illuminates all of that. And that's what draws the manta rays. And they are these huge rays with these big mouths. And um, I have been blessed enough to do it twice. And I call it like underwater ballet. They are like so graceful. That I at first thought I was going to be afraid and I'm very comfortable in the ocean, right. um, but because they are so massive in size, but there's never been anybody threatened by a manta ray or any issues that are not like stingrays in the Caribbean, you okay. know, with, with barbs or anything like that. So there's actually, there's no danger, um, you know, in watching them because basically what you're doing is with a snorkel mask and your face in the water, you know, they, they create most of the, um, companies and you can do it via a kayak, a boat, um, a, a zodiac raft. They have all of these ways to put you into the water. Okay. Um, and with snorkel gear on and a shorty wetsuit because the water gets cooler at night. Um, and they create like these raft concoctions through those, you know, those pool noodles. Uh huh. Tie a bunch of those together so you can hold on to them. And then you just stick your face in the water and you just watch. And it is like, yes, one of the most amazing and unique things wow. I have done anywhere. So I tell all of my clients that if they are, are at all interested in this, it is like a must do yeah. um, activity if you're there. And to me, it's also some of the best daytime snorkeling is on that island at okay. Kealakitula Bay from Kona, the Kona area, south of the Kona resorts. Um, some of the clearest um fish i mean the, the water is just beautiful they have a number of snorkeling trips that you can do there um, but also kona it is where they have the kona coffee farms so mm -hmm. for people who are into kona coffee or coffee in general the coffee farms do tours and tastings and things like that it's only a relatively small area where they can say it's actually kona coffee or a percentage of kona coffee uh -huh. um there's daytime trips over to you can drive over to hilo and that's where there's uh, like a Kaka Falls. So there's waterfalls there. There's zip lines. That's the rainier side of the island. Okay. Um, very non-touristy at all. Um, so, I mean, there's just uh, amazing choices. Those are the main four islands that most people visit. Right. Um, Oahu and Maui are number one and number two for first time mm -hmm. visitors. Right. Uh, and you will find people who have been over and over and over because they just, <laughs> right. Um, but the, the islands of Lanai and Molokai, which are in the channel off of Maui and considered right. technically part of Maui County. Um, the Lanai is the only island in which you can get to from not only the air, but from a ferry. So Maui okay. has a ferry that takes people over to Lanai so they can go there for the day. There's two Four Seasons properties, one that's a wellness facility and one that is a beach resort oh. um, uh, at Manelli Bay. So otherwise, there's no other hotel accommodations on Lanai. So you do need to have clients with deep pockets. They're both set on golf courses. Um, and so it, it can be it's an escape for somebody looking for that. It's a privately owned island by Larry Ellison, who owns Oracle. Mm -hmm. It used to be the Pineapple Island owned by Dole. And so that's okay. what people, it was known for. Um, and so, and then the island of Molokai um, does, the only way you can get there is by flying. There's no major hotel. There's a two and a half star little like old motel kind of hotel okay. kind of place. Um, and then there's a few places that have some condos that are uh, available to book through some of our tour operator suppliers. Okay. Uh, you know, like Pleasant Holidays or Blue Sky Tours or 
FunJet or the different suppliers that you can use to book Hawaii. Um, I was I was going to ask who are some of your favorite suppliers to book Hawaii because I know you mentioned Classic, but I think those well, three are two or three other really great options also. So yeah, I I primarily use Pleasant Holidays myself. Okay. Um, and now the only reason I like Classic Vacations personally as well, but Classic Vacations is a more luxury supplier. Okay. So yeah. you're not going to find you're not usually going to find anything below a four star with Classic Vacations. Um, where Pleasant Holidays actually has condos and things down to two and a half stars. Okay. Even though I wouldn't necessarily always recommend those because of course you do get what you pay for and that's going to mean something that's not renovated and, you know, maybe not even have air conditioning, which could be important in the summertime. Right. Um, but, you know, there are suppliers that make it possible for clients of most types of budgets to be able to visit Hawaii. Okay. So, um, Pleasant Holidays has that Blue Sky Tours, which is um, a, a part of the uh, on Vax, the you know the booking engine with Vax. Uh, you can find Blue Sky Tours there, which has only Hawaii okay. uh, mainly, um, as well as other suppliers in Vax. If that's your preferred um, ALG is your preferred supplier, okay. you can also do Hawaii through Travel Impressions or Funjet. Um, you know, depending on, or Apple Vacations, whichever of the suppliers in the VAX booking engine you prefer, you can find Hawaii there as an option. Um, the reason I, I give Pleasant Holidays to a lot of advisors is because their res agents are very helpful over the phone and there's no reduction in your commission by getting help over the phone, like some suppliers cut the commission a little bit if you're using online, you know, over the phone help to put okay. together quotes and like, like vacation express. And there's some others anyway, okay. um, which doesn't do Hawaii anyway, Hawaii, vacation express is only Mexico and the Caribbean. Okay. Um, but uh, pleasant holidays for agents. They can make you look like a rock star and help you put together itineraries and quotes for clients because their res agents know how to put those trips together, especially the itineraries like multi-island trips that trip up a lot of agents trying to mm -hmm. do the pleasant agent, the pleasant holidays agent site. Okay. So it is, you can, you can absolutely do everything you need to on the pleasant agent site, including multi-island itineraries, mm -hmm. but um, using their reservation agents, um, they break them out by destination. Okay. So it's a really good way of getting help that you need from the reservation agents and information because they will know and help you okay. and they can give you lots of information. You just tell them what your clients are looking for and they will help you put together an itinerary. So that... it's, it's one of the best ones for that. I think for agents who don't know a destination and obviously pleasant holidays doesn't just sell Hawaii, but for any destination where pleasant holidays might be a preferred supplier with your host consortia or mm -hmm. franchise, it could be a good option as their reservation agents are good and helpful. And like some other suppliers, it might be very difficult to get through to reservation agents and get help. But yeah. with pleasant holidays, it's, it's, it's easy. And, you know, trust me, I have no skin in the game for any of the suppliers. I just know because, <laughs> right. because I, because I work with a lot of new agents uh -huh. uh, as well with Hawaii, you know, that it, I find that it's easier. It's agent friendly. Yes. You know, yes. and yes, you know, Pleasant Holidays does work with consumers. So just like any company that works with consumers as well as advisors, you know, I don't, I'm never going to send the clients a confirmation from the supplier until they actually make a deposit because I don't exactly. want them going around me, right? Exactly. I mean, that's, a, that's <laughs> definitely a sales trick. I tell a lot of all of the new agents on my team, as well as new agents that I train and mentor through my host, you yeah. know, like, one thing is don't get them, don't send clients too much supplier information right away that they can take and book away from you. They can do it if they want to anyway, but exactly. don't make it easy for them. <laughs> Exactly. No. Well, Christy, thank you so much for being, I feel like this has been like a masterclass on Hawaii. Um, so please share with us what your resources are. Cause I know, please share with us like your Facebook group for anybody who's like, well, this was super helpful and getting, letting me like know a little bit about Hawaii for those who are interested in like learning more and learning from you, where can they head over to, to find everything out? Yeah, so on my Facebook group, it's called Resorts of Hawaii for Travel Advisors. 
Okay. Um, and there are several Hawaii travel agent groups, but that's mine. And I okay. just crossed over 10,000 members. Woo-hoo. So we do have the largest group. Okay. Um, nothing to say bad about any of the other groups. It's just that I focus on education. So mm-hmm. my, I, I do supplier webinars. Um, so today we're actually having one with Marriott in Hawaii in Waikiki. Awesome. Awesome. Focusing on several of the hotels. I'm doing that in the next couple of hours. Okay. Um, and then at the I time of this have... recording, not on this actual yes, at, I'm day. I'm sorry. At people. the time of this recording. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just <laughs> in <laughs> case. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're um, fine. <laughs> and, but I have. But they're all. But they're all of the recordings are actually shared in the Facebook group, so agents do not have to oh, be on perfect. live. They can go. I save them for at least a year. Okay. Um, so they're all posted in the group, so people can do that and watch on their own time as well as I have three of my own master classes that go into the islands in detail, as well as one that's just focused on resorts. Okay. Because honestly, that's the biggest hurdle for advisors is that the supplier webinars, unless you watch on the hotel specific ones, the Hawaii training only focuses on the islands and the activities right. and the culture. Right. It does not focus on the resorts. So it's important to know the resorts as well if you want to be able to match your clients to the right experience. Exactly. I I highly like agree, like putting up like, yes, that's that's exactly because once you're able to figure out the differences between the islands, I feel like that's the biggest sticking point is being yes. like, okay, so where do I put them to stay now that I know what islands they're going to go to. They're like, well, okay, what about this hotel versus that hotel? And especially if they're relatively close in price, mm-hmm. it's like, well, and there's definite hotels are definite better for some. There's definitely hotels that are better for families, hotels mm-hmm. that are better for couples, hotels that are better for groups, you know, just like anywhere. So that's why I did one master class just focused on resorts and primarily on Oahu and Maui because that's those are overwhelmingly the islands that more agents have visitors uh, mm-hmm. clients going to. Um, but I also do one on one mentoring awesome. um, and as well as help with itinerary. So I, I'm pretty open in my, um, you know, messaging on Facebook and I'll answer quick questions or I've done one-on-one mentoring sessions um, with agents to help teach them um, about how to put the the itineraries together and tips and you know adding in activities and things I know we didn't get to cover because we I've already talked too long um so (laughs) but you know just be sure (laughs) one last tip one last tip is be sure that you know that you can do a complete itinerary for your clients uh, with putting together tours, activities, luau's, all of those things with commission um, through companies like Project Expedition, via tour if you're registered as an agent, um, Pleasant Activities, which is a division of Pleasant Holidays. So be sure you're you're not only completing um, an, a complete itinerary for your clients, but it's also a way for you to add more commission. Mm-hmm. And for your clients to have a better overall experience so that, yes. you know, they're not wait because don't let them wait to get to Hawaii and because things will be sold out in full. And then that equals disappointment. So right. be sure you learn and know about all of the options that you can send to your clients and um, give them options about the islands and things so that they have the best experience. And they, in that way, then they will refer you to other people as well as come back to you for future vacations if you take care of them well. Yes. I love it all. This has been like a chock full episode. Thank you again, Christy, for being here and sharing with us on our summer series. Thank you so much for having me and and have a great summer, everybody. And a lot of Hawaii. Oh, yes. Thanks, travel advisors. We'll see you here next week. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me on the summer selling series. If you haven't already, make sure to download that free worksheet for today's episode in the show description. And if you've got a travel biz friend that you think would benefit from this series, would you mind sharing this episode with them? All right. Thank you again. I'll see you here next week.